welcome to Arts and Minds again. Arts and Minds is a, a program with uh, to provide art activities for people living with dementia and their caregivers. Um, we would prefer, of course, to be meeting in person as, as we used to be able to do and hopefully again before too long. But uh, for now, online, and we're grateful to have this opportunity to keep in touch with you and, uh, and give you an activity that you might be able to do at home together uh, with, uh, with materials that, that, that you might have on hand. So I just want to take a minute before we start today's activity to just talk about the materials, the ones that we've used in our last four programs. This is five. Um, we've used uh, we've used watercolor crayons. We've used markers, ordinary markers. We've used colored pencils. We've used um, watercolor paints. Uh, we've used just pencil, which we did last week with with a still life, and, and I think it was fun. Uh, so we can we can do that. Coming up, and as we go along with this, we likely will introduce um, acrylic paints if you have those, and maybe just temper paint, temper paint, poster paint, paint the kids use, and that they're they're bright and and cheerful as well. So those are the kinds of materials that we've been using. Um, I should also mention that uh, last week I mentioned that they were available at uh, Wallach's and, uh, and Michael's online, but I have heard that uh, some or maybe all of the dollar stores are open and they certainly have uh, paints. They have, I know they have watercolor paints and they have colored pencils and so on. They won't have the water, watercolor crayons, I don't think, but they have a good supply of art, art supplies. So check them out if that's possible for you. So for today, you have a choice. For, uh, there are a couple of things you absolutely have to have. Uh, you have to have a pencil. Uh, it would be a good idea to have a, a marker of, of some sort. Um, you need paper. And the paper is going to be determined by the medium that you use. I'm going to be doing watercolor, so this is watercolor paper. If you're doing anything that's water-based, then you should have watercolor paper too. If not, ordinary paper is just fine. If you're, if you're going to just use pencil or colored crayons or so, then, then ordinary paper is fine. So you need the paper for your, draw, for your, for your uh, painting, uh, and you also need another piece of paper uh, just for a rough sketch that, that, uh, that we're going to be doing. Okay, so good time to sort of get yourself organized, pause the video, and uh, get yourself organized uh, to get started. So this is our reference for today, a rural mailbox. I love rural mailboxes. I love driving through the countryside and just looking at mailboxes. Uh, I don't know about you, but I really enjoy doing that. Um, quite often you see them, uh, you know, sort of brightly colored and people have gone to a great deal of trouble to decorate them or make them very unique in some way uh, or, or just paint them or just, just the metal ones like this. Uh, some of them are on um, posts like this. Uh, sometimes they're falling over practically into the ditch. Anyway, I do like seeing mailboxes. On every mailbox there is a flag. The flag indicates whether or not there is mail for you today. And the flag is up if the mail delivery has, has brought you mail and put it in the mailbox, then the flag is up. And then once you take your mail out of the box, which this person has done, then you flip the flag down. Right? That's all I know about mailboxes, other than that I really quite, quite like them. All right. What I did with this is I started with a pencil sketch. I just sort of had an idea that I wanted to do a mailbox. So I took some pictures and I got just a rough piece of paper and did a pencil sketch. Just roughly, I just wanted to get the idea of the shape of the of the mailbox, where I wanted the post, um, you know, sort of the size size of it, and so on, and where I wanted it positioned on the paper. It's a good idea, no matter what you're painting, to start with a pencil sketch. 
just to, to just so that you kind of get a sense of what it's going to look like and, and where you want it to be on the on the page. So this is my pencil sketch. I also put a few of those little twigs and branches down at the bottom to just give it a little bit of context. So I think you should start with that today. So take a pause again and with your pencil and your piece of plain paper, just do a sketch of, of, a, of a mailbox. Okay. From there, I then put, I then did a mailbox on an outline drawing, which I will now paint. Uh, so uh, without a lot of detail, just an outline drawing uh, from, from my pencil sketch. Okay, so what I would like you to do now is on your good piece of paper, do an outline drawing that then you will color afterwards. So we'll leave this up, take a pause and do the outline drawing. And now we're ready to add color. I'm going to be using watercolor and I'm using this, this little set of watercolors. You'll be fast finding out that watercolors are my, my favorite medium. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm not going to paint the whole thing because it, I, I, it, I, you can see it on the reference. All right? But just to give you some tips about, about painting it, the same if you're using colored crayon, or, um, yeah, colored pencils or, or the watercolor crayons, same sort of things will apply. All right. So because these have been sitting dry for a while, I do have to give them a bit of, of, a, of a squirt here. I hope not to get it all over the place. So I'm, I'm using a bit of a bigger brush than I've used, uh, used before when I was doing watercolor, uh, just as a bigger space. This is a nine by 12 paper, by the way. Um, and it, it's, just, it's just bigger. It, I, need, I need a bigger brush to, to fill the space, okay? Now, I am going to just bring that a little bit closer to there again, all right, so that you can see that. And again, mention that um, it's a bit difficult to do this on an angle, but we'll do our best. All right. I'm gonna start with the grassy area down here. And you will see in the reference that the grassy area is sort of green and yellow and a bit of brown in there. So I'm gonna start with just a, a, a light yellow if you're using uh, water, uh, watercolor paint, uh, or like this is lemon yellow, uh, and I'm not filling this whole space. I'm just going to go give a hint that this is a grassy area. Okay. I'm going to add a little more paint there. I'm going to cover some of this up, but this is just just to give a hint. And again, uh, from time to time, you will see the reference, and you will see how it how it is on the reference. So. Going through here. Like so. yeah. All right. This is a little rougher than, than you will likely be doing with it, just to give you the idea. Then right. I'm going to add a bit of green to that. Just put it, let it blend in, <clears throat> let, let it go together. <clears throat> Excuse me, leave a bit of yellow. I'm cleaning my brush. Periodically putting about water on it. Keeping this quite wet if you're using watercolor, if you're using um, watercolor paints. It just... And again, I'm not, I'm not taking a lot of, of, of time with that. <clears throat> now, what I want to do also with this is add a little bit of earth color, uh, a little bit of brown, maybe with a little bit of red in it. That's too red. There, that's good. And put that in because there's ground down here. There's earth. So we want to put just a bit of earth. It comes over here. Like so. Okay. All right. Okay, I think those, I think that green needs a little darkening up. So I'm going to put, mix a little bit of green, and a little bit of blue. And just while it's still wet, I hope it is, just put some darker bits in there. Add a little highlight.
you can, and again, you know, ch we'll check the reference and see how, how it looks on the reference, which will be better than this, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just going to leave that now because I want you to take a pause now and work on your grassy area. Okay. And remember always, whatever we do, uh, when you come back to it, you get lots of time to sort of fix up what you don't like as we get towards the end. So I'm going to do the sky. Uh, and again, I'm not going to fill in the whole thing. I'm just going to sort of indicate. And again, I want this to be quite wet and I hope it doesn't run all over the place, but just indicate that this is, this is a sky. Go down a little bit here. I don't like that. There we go. And again, I mean, it's it's uh, it's not it's not just a, a, a you know solid blue sky. It's just a hints of clouds and so on. A little darker underneath the mailbox on both sides underneath the mailbox. Okay, on the sides. Okay, so, and again, I'm going to leave that, take a look at the reference, uh, and go ahead and do your sky. Okay, we're going to do the post. The post is just a, a solid wood stump, so uh, we're going to just find a brown for that. And just go again, don't make it solid, let it, it just, I like that. Oops, and it is running, that's okay. I'm going to make a little bit darker brown and maybe add a little bit of blue to that to make it really quite dark, because I want it dark on this side. I want one side to be darker than the other. And I'm getting it way too wet here, but okay. I'm just gonna have to leave that for a sec because it's it's uh, too wet to work with. So um, let me just pick that up. With it. Okay, I'm just going to leave that for a second because I can't put anything on there right now. It's just far too wet. So uh, work on your post with a bit of brown and on one side, making it quite a bit darker because the light's coming in this way. All right, I'll come back and fix that up afterwards. Okay, take a pause and do your post. Okay, how's it going? Now that now that you're back, let me just see if I can uh, fix up mine there on that side. That might be no, still too wet. Okay. Anyway, I would have to do I would have to do that later, but you've got the reference to look at in any case. So now the mailbox. And I'm not going to paint the mailbox again because I want this to be your design of a mailbox. But I am going to come back for a minute to, to the reference. And just to point out a couple of things. The mailbox is round. So when you're, when you're painting it or, or coloring it with whatever, make sure that your lines are sort of curved Curved lines like that to sort of point that it's round, not just straight up and down. Okay, curved lines like so. So you're going to paint. You're going to paint your box however you would like to paint it. You can put flowers on it. Uh, you can put your name on it. I think names have to be on mailboxes. Actually, you can put your name on it. Uh, do whatever you like to decorate your own mailbox. When you come to do the inside. Um, because the light is, is shining, you can see that it's in there. Make this part sort of here quite dark, because that's in the shadow. All right, and the same thing down here. All right. Oh, and the flag is red. I think that I think the flag has to be red. All right. Well, anyway, we're going to say it is. <laughs> um, so I want you to design your own mailbox now. And I'm going to pause. We're going to take a pause right now and just uh, work on that. You can always come back to it uh, a bit later and, and, and finish it off. We're not quite finished down here yet, but just spend a bit of time on your mailbox and then come back. 
Okay, so to finish it, down here in the grassy area, you can use your marker or you can use a colored pencil, uh, whatever you like, to just, to just put in some, some, I think you can see them here, just some, some twigs, some branches that are sticking up, just roughly, just higgledy-piggledy uh, anywhere on here. It's not perfect, it's nature, it's not perfect. So just to show that there's sort of branches and grass and stuff growing up there. So that finishes it off. Yeah. So take your time to finish yours in your, in your own time. In the meantime, uh, don't forget um, to, to sign your name uh, and put the date on it. And because we've sort of left this, I've left this for you to do, I really, really would like you to send send it to us we'll show you at the end of the video how you can send us a photo of, of what you've done um i'd love to see that because as i as you know i love mailboxes <laughs> okay thanks for joining us we'll see you next time and in the, in the meantime take good care